Hey, Robin. Nice to see you. Welcome, everyone, again, to Tap Into Your Creativity. I'm sorry, I don't know what happened with Wendy's audio on our first um, live here. So I'm just waiting for her to rejoin. And we will um, hopefully just um, start where we left off. So Wendy is an artist from Charlotte, North Carolina. And there she is, and I'm just bringing her in again. Um, anyways, um, we will just pick up where she left, but she is a multidisciplinary artist, and there she is. Hi. I, it was a spam call. Oh. And I can't turn that off. I <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> hilarious. Um, so, in a, in a nutshell, I'm just going to give them um, what you just said, because <laughs> for people that are just joining now, um, why don't you go ahead and tell us um, a little quickly who you are and where you are. I'm Charlotte. I'm, from, I'm on Bald Head Island. <laughs> I can go back and look at the other one, because I don't want to bore the people that had just came on back. <laughs> they, they, exactly. Like, so uh, you are in Charlotte, Island. North Carolina. Right. Your studio is there. Yeah. And you're a full-time artist, entrepreneur, and you have your own business. And we're going to go into that um, whole business part of things <laughs> in a little bit. I'm sorry, guys. This happens, right? Live, live things, live happens. I'm, on, I'm getting a lot of spam calls lately. So let's just, <laughs> no one call. <laughs> Exactly. I don't know how to turn that notification off. Oh, darn. Uh, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Hopefully you won't get another one. Um, so we were talking about um, creativity and how people can get to the place where they find their own voice and how, can you tell us, Wendy, how and when did you figure out that this was your voice and this was what you wanted to do? Yes, when I, I remember I started painting and I, and I also remember having this thought that if I told anyone how I really felt, they would think I was really weird. <laughs> <laughs> like just this past summer, the artist way, and I'm like, ah, oh, everybody feels that same thing. I'm not weird at all, but it's the <laughs> magic part of creating something, right? Yes! yes. <laughs> I never heard of it. Oh my god, I have it like right here. I'm starting my morning pages. Okay, I love it. Um, so I remember just painting and I remember I had a goal that I would paint. I would try to paint four hours every day. And I fell in, so in love with creating and it didn't matter to me whether or not I painted something good or bad, it was all about learning from one thing to the other and listening and intuitively painting and reacting to the piece. And I remember walking out of the room and thanking God. And I thought, I don't know what that is, but that is amazing. Like that feeling of the creator, cause it's not me and I, it, Sometimes it does bug me when I see, when artists, because artists, you know, everyone has an ego, obviously, but when that ego gets in the way of where it true, where all of our blessings and talents come from, it, that's your block. That's every, that's everyone's art block or a writer's block or whatever that is. It's tapping into allowing to, you to be used. And um, that is an amazing feeling. It, I could see my energy on a flat surface. And that was, that's what hooked me. And ever since then, I just, people constantly say, oh my gosh, your work is so joyful. Your work is so happy. And I get that because most of the time, not, not every day, trust me, I've had a really hard week, but at, not every day. Um, but I'm generally a happy person and I'm so joyful when I paint. So yeah. that's, 
That's how I, I gotta tell you. Um, I um, I was painting yesterday in my studio, and you and I were talking, and you know that feeling of that rush when it's like this adrenaline in your whole body, and you're dancing to the music if you're listening to music, which I always do, and you're just you know in this groove that you try and find you know every time that you're creating. But if you're lucky to find it, there's no better place to be. No. None. Not none whatsoever. And so to I remember when people started buying my artwork and I did shop pop up shows and friends homes. That's like kinda how you start and then galleries and it just blossomed from there. But I remember like I, I'm still so grateful that someone is willing to they respond so much to something that I can have a business and do it every day. Right. Like I would do it exactly. anyway. Packed away in some barn somewhere, a warehouse, and no one ever exactly. bought them. <laughs> so, yeah, you, we, but, we don't take it for granted for a second. I mean, we're so grateful that this is happening to us. And, and um, I do want to go back to what you said um, before we got caught off, which was, you know, we portray on Instagram, everything is amazing and everything is great. And there's so much work behind, you know, everything that we do and everything that we post. And for people that, you know, they ask me, and I'm sure they ask you all the time, what works for you on Instagram and with all the algorithms that have changed? And um, do you keep doing it every day? Like how long, how much effort do you put into it? Oh my gosh, I do it every single day. <laughs> and um, I mean, I do have my, the Shop Wendy page, which, and I have help. So I do get have some help. I'm really trying to find someone who would be nice to have it all taken care of because that is a huge part of my job and has been for a long time. But that's part of marketing and branding. And thank goodness Instagram is around and Facebook because you, are, you can pay, but you can also promote your work for free and how amazing is that and Pinterest and there are so many options, but that's pretty fantastic. Um, I feel like for me, because not everyone's Instagram is the same, but there are so many accounts that I follow that are beyond brilliant, just savvy. Like I like, Oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> um, but for me, I feel like my, uh, I, I can do nothing but be genuine on mine and I hope people respond to that. I hope people respond to um, maybe being inspired. I do share a lot of joy on my Instagram. That is really what my art is all about and what my all about. My girlfriend said it best. She goes, Wendy, you invite people over to the happy side of the street. And I love that. <laughs> I love that. What a great way of describing you. Yeah, I know, I know. Those were not my words. <laughs> Thank you, Cody Johnson. That was so delightful. I'm like, oh my gosh, that is the nicest. And I hope that I do do that every day. And I'm still working on my Instagram skills. I think we all are. It's good just to learn. Like, go and look at videos. Look at people who do it re super well. Um, take good photography. Um, bad photography can kill your Instagram, sadly. <laughs> also, artists, I think this is one of the most important things I will say about Instagram is I feel, if I'm feeling the pressure to paint something that goes in my, looks pretty in my feed, you cannot do that. You, no. I, I, I'm not going to be. You lost. To... You lost right there. <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah. I think yeah. that there are people that are only create for the gram. And so their visual is for the gram, their look. I don't want to be a decorative painter. I don't want to be a. And, and that's fine if people who are. Is my stuff, do I want it to go in homes? Yes. I have an interior design background. I ended up with a degree in design, interior design. And so that's always in the back of my mind as I am create anyway. But it's not, um, 
I'm not painting something just so someone likes it on Instagram or that it looks good in my right. feet. In fact, and you just posted a beautiful portrait with so much feeling in um, that portrait. And, um, you know, and it's, it's a little bit out of character, um, but yeah. you threw yourself raw in a very raw state and, mm -hmm. and you put it out there because that's how you're feeling. And I, kudos for doing that because we'll that is that a true, that is your true self coming out. Yes. Yeah, definitely. That's and that, that has to be okay. Right. So. Exactly. Exactly. I hope that people who are looking for art or searching for art are looking for, I get, listen, everyone has a different budget too. So you want something pretty. I did a whole collaboration with Home Goods that has been fabulous. And I love all of the stories that I've been getting from that. But I also hope that people want art that is, that moves them in some way, makes them feel better, makes them happy for a moment. I hope that the things that you respond to instinctually and intuitively, that those are the pieces of art that you're buying, whether it's mine or a million other artists that are out there, that um, you will live with those pieces the longest and cherish so them. So I 100%, and you have to, you know, you have to um, share that passion um, yeah. with the artists that you're buying from. Um, and if you get to meet the artists and you get to meet your clients, it's like a cherry on the cake, I yes. think. Yes. And Maybe. so, um, so you have, like you just mentioned, you have a whole business of home goods. Um, you have textiles, you have wallpapers, you have pillows, you have, um, you have, uh, clothing. So, um, how did that start and how did you start that? I just started <laughs> probably eight. No, it's been longer than that. Somebody reminded me the other day and I think I've lost track of time. <laughs> other year I don't know. but maybe it was 10 years ago I'm thinking somewhere in there I just started making designs from my artwork I saw one other artist and I thought oh and she really didn't do a lot of art at the time she I'm I knew about her because of her textiles and wallpaper right and um some artwork um and I'd never met her before. Um, she lived in another part of the country. But I loved that idea. And I thought, okay, if mine looks anything like hers, I'm not doing it. But And they looked completely different. Thank goodness. So I just started creating the designs. Um, and I had a friend who's like, you have to do High Point Market, which I didn't know what that would be like. It's... I have a friend who just, an artist friend who said she wanted to do it. And I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> so tell us what is High Point Market for people that don't know. So it is the largest furniture market in the world. As it, it used to be. Now there's some other ones like in Paris. There's another one. Um, uh, so, but you get buyers from all over the world, except the last two years because of COVID. Um, that that's kind of put a standstill to all interiors, huh? furnishings, you know, getting things shipped, et cetera. But High Point Market is where you go and you can set up a showroom. Interior designers go to see new things, purchase for a client. They buy, it's mostly furniture. So a lot of people will go and make their furniture buys th for the year. Um, and so I just, I set up a booth and it just took off from there that so we do sell um, our pillow line is amazing. And, and we, it took me probably a good four years to get it all down. You know, you make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> I made a lot of mistakes in the beginning along the way. And it's still a learning process. Building a business and owning a business is um, harder than it looks. Uh, yes, it is because now you're managing people as well, and um, so it's not yourself. So you have um, the the 
control freak that we are or that I am sometimes, it's hard to let it go and have somebody else do it um, or represent yourself the same way that you would represent yourself. And so I think that part is hard. I think also um, just growing the way that you have been growing, um, the fulfillment of the orders, the making sure that you're on top of it and that you can't just relax. And, and you and I were saying like, you know, I'm, I'm shutting down for, for a while and you're like, I, I can't. I know I want to, but I can't. No, I've been, and when I come to the beach to paint, I literally hear like with my adult kiddos, they're not getting calm kids, but I have to always call, oh, they'll always be my kids. Um, and I will paint from morning until into the evening because I'm not walking to a studio or driving to my studio. I'm here. So I just run upstairs after dinner and paint until I go to bed. And so I get a lot done, but I have to, because that is a, that's the most difficult part when you're running a business, painting takes 100% of your focus and you can't do it fat quickly. So, no. No. Right? And you have to have your own space. Um, yeah have to be able to think mm -hmm. and respond without distraction. And so um, all of that is a lot of pressure. It's been enjoyable and such an amazing adventure, but it, it trust me, it might look easy, but it is so not. <laughs> <laughs> and look at, look at Rindy, she's smiling when she's saying that. <laughs> So, I mean, I think it's important for people to know exactly what you're saying, because you make it look so easy, but yet there's so much work behind it. 100%. And so, so day, I mean, that's the, I mean, you work, there's no downtime. And especially because you're selling around the world. So the, you know, so your, your site is getting constant movement um day and night so you wake up and you already have things that you have to get through and you know so um and i have you a team also that helps me so it's not just me but even with your team and managing a team it all of i i don't even want to complain but i do want to at least be honest about what the experience is like yeah. because any artist who goes i mean I'm sure there's some artists that just go into art to earn money and run a business. If that's your thing, maybe you'll feel like it's a lot easier. But for me, my sole goal and my 100% passion is creating art. Whether it's a, a collage, a three-dimensional piece, a sculpture, any, that is what I live for. I, that's the thing that makes me the most joyful and jump out of bed. Um, and I, and the other stuff you have to do, like you can't, if you want to do that, you still have to get your artwork out there and promote it so that you can pay for a studio. So you can buy your art supplies. So you, it's not um, inexpensive. Uh, no, to no, it's, it's definitely not inexpensive. So what would you suggest for people that want to sell their artwork, don't know how to do it, what are the three or more steps that you would take um, as a beginner or even an intermediate artist? Like if it's not working what you're doing, um, what would you suggest for them to do? Well, and growing on Instagram right now is a lot more difficult because so if you're joining late, it's really hard to grow your Instagram unless you're in, I would suggest do a lot of videos um, and let people get to know you. I don't do that enough. I need to, I do need to do that more. But another thing is look at your community, look at opportunities where you can show your work, even if it's in a boutique, even if it's in an open space that you rent and have, maybe you get four artist friends and you guys share a space and have an art show. Maybe you do it like for us in my community, um, 
you know, everyone's community is different, but in my community, a lot of people did home, this was 13 years ago, home pop-up shows. So people would have art displayed in someone's house and, and jewelry and things like that. Just think of different and creative ways where you can get your art in front of other people. Really, that's the key. Right, right. And sh someone just said that they're not naturally performance. I, I mean, and, and we, you don't need to be. You need yeah. to be you, you need to be true to yourself and what feels good to you and, and try to, um, you know, exude that energy out and you will get it somehow. But just be consistent in what you do. So if you choose to, you know, show up on Instagram, then do it. Uh, if you choose to, you know, go out in, in your community and look for possibilities, just do it. I think that the first step is is actually committing to yourself and then to others. But if you're committed to yourself, then you can get from point E A from point A to point B. Otherwise you're not connecting the dots. Well and also you have to be you. Like don't try to be someone I have seen that a couple of times and I'm like, oh you have to be who you are meant to be. God created you exactly the way you were supposed to be made. And that is perfect. Don't try to become someone else. Don't paint like someone else. Don't, you, you can do that for practice, but have your own style, create your own things, um, create your own voice and use it. Figure out what that voice is. There are a lot of artists that become artists or have always been artists because and introverted and don't, are not so that social that is totally fine that is the beauty of social media you can just show your hands painting your work to make videos you don't have to say anything you could do voiceovers if you want you could just do it to music there's so many ways and if you're not social and don't feel comfortable doing a pop-up or asking someone if you have a friend who is, that wouldn't mind doing that for you. I think Just sometimes- Be creative and sometimes it's good to get out of your comfort zone. So if you've <laughs> never tried something, maybe try it, you know, and see if, if it makes, what makes you feel, if you react to it or not, if it makes you feel different or not. But if you don't but, try it, you will never know. But if it's gonna be the thing that stops you from doing anything, like if that fear is so great that you're going to just say, I'd rather not do it at all, then think of a creative way to still get that so that you're not. Um, Agreed. Agreed. Okay. So, so you don't have blocks. Yes. That's yes. right. Because right. we put our own blocks. We are our, our worst critics and we are, our, we, you know, we judge ourselves so harshly every time. And um, we talked about the artist way and how, you know, Julia Cameron always says like, you have that little voice in your head all the time that's doubting you, that's saying you're not good enough, your painting is not great, you're not going to do this, you're not going to do that. And if you start switching the way that you think and the way that you start acting, um, it, will, it will really come back to you in a good and way. That's right. Yeah. So... Yeah, right. I mean, I think that these are important points for everyone to know. Like, you know, I think it's important that we, we really, like you said, find our true voice. And it is great to go through Instagram and find inspiration. I mean, that's where I do I go there. And I, I love seeing it. I love the, you know, I still love the pictures just to still picture, you know, it's, it's gorgeous to me. And, um, and then I go back and I, and I find my why, you know, um, it's important to find why you're doing what you're doing. Yes. Oh, somebody made a great point. Yes. It's one thing to make art another to become a video star. <laughs> so, <laughs> no kidding. And so, <laughs> interesting. Oh my gosh. What's the girl's name? I hate to not give her the credit. There is some, this girl started following Insta, it Insta's in the name. I'll, I can put it in. I'll send it to um, Sandra. Put it in my notes. Oh, my gosh. She makes clothing <laughs> out of 
like party fringe and pom poms. And it's just her in the outfit every day. She is amazing. She doesn't say a word. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Your imagination. <laughs> I'm sure she was thinking, oh, I, I didn't think I was going to be a rock star. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> like, we don't want to be entertainers. But, we want to be artists. And, yeah. and, you know, and I think that there's a big difference between being the entertainer and being the artist and staying in your lane, right? Yes. And artists are, inter the entertainment business is all art. So it just, right. you, if you think about visual artists, there are, actors are artists, dancers are artists, poets are artists, writers are artists. Art comes in a million different ways. And, and it can be interconnected, all of it. Yes. And so just, it is all about using your imagination and how you want to get your art out there. There's not, if you, if you are, it's so good to be inspired by what you see, but it's also good to take time and perspective to think, what can I do that I haven't seen? Mm -hmm. Right. Something amazing that you've thought about that no one else has. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Harder said than done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, how did you find your business skills? Well, that's a great question. <laughs> I realize how much I do enjoy business and I love it. And I give all of the credit to um, I do feel like I, because I'm not one to go, oh, yeah, I'm so great. I'm not. And listen, there is so much to learn. But I learned a lot from my parents. Um, both of my parents were entrepreneurs. And all of my grandparents, except my grandmother who raised 10 children, I mean, she ran a business. That's a business for raising a household. Full <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right? Um, but everyone was an entrepreneur. So I think I just grew up with some, I probably inherited some business genes, if there is such a thing, but also the awareness of um, hard work. Because when you, you know, you're not getting a paycheck unless you, you make it, you make that. Um, and I also learned the value of uh, just growing up in a household where those conversations were had or hearing conversations and, and just teachings. Like my dad's like, you don't ever spend more than you have. Don't ever ha have credit. You don't ever use a credit card. Like if you don't have cash, you can't afford it. Like, like there, that really helps in your business. Because, okay. Yeah. We, I, I do that because I, you know, there's a point where you go in and borrow money or, which I never have. Maybe we'll get to that place when we are growing to that um, next level. But um, I think I just learned a lot of great business skills and philosophies from my parents. That's amazing. That's yeah. awesome. That's really great. And I get to see you now growing, you know, on your own. I mean, it must be so rewarding. Thank you. That part is. It really is. Yeah, I'm sure. So if someone wants to learn about how to start a business, where would you send them? Like how what what would be a good place for them to look? Um see that's another thing that so it's different for every single person. Take a business course at your local university or community college. Um, there are probably videos online, but I would be careful because I think there are a lot of people out there that will teach you, especially I've seen a lot of videos recently. We all have about teaching you how to be, grow your business as an artist, or I'm going to teach you how to be a professional. Especially this last year. Oh my gosh. Yes. And then there's another, um, social media site, which I probably won't mention, that I've gone on to just kind of do my homework. And I'm like, wait a minute, all these people in these chat rooms, 
have no jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, but they're like, because you can't have the time to be in the chat room all day if you're working or running a business. <laughs> awesome. um, so be, be very wary about where you get things and information online. Let me just say that. There are some amazing people out there doing some great educational videos on how to run an art business. Be very picky and juicy about those, I would say. Um, and and I have, I personally have interviewed incredible art business people that um, if you're interested, just go into um, my IGTV or YouTube and look them up. I mean, Bridget Myers, um, Sergio Gomez, uh, just to name a few. I mean, they are incredible, legit people that are out there to help artists um, start their businesses and they want to, for you to succeed. They don't want your money. They want for you to succeed. And there's a huge difference. That is exactly right. And I feel the same way. I would say definitely if you're already working at being an artist and selling your work, you're learning business skills. Correct. Ready. So just honing those, working hard at it, um, being vigilant, being um, diligent in your efforts. And really, it's just, it's basic hard work. Yeah. And the other thing that I would say that I think it's super important is for you to connect with your um, community of artists. Um, try as much as you can to have, um, you know, a sounding board um, from your community of artists. They have so much knowledge and they can share. And um, if you've seen all these interviews, all you guys have shared so much and are open to conversations. If you don't ask, you will never know. So I would say you like what they're doing, ask them. Ask them how they're doing it, how, what works for them. I am sure that they will find the time to get back to you. Would you agree with that? Yes. If they, yes. If they may not get back to you right away. So right. Do not be offended. Sometimes I can't, but um, someone will eventually get back to you. Yes, exactly. And it's important. It's important that you make those connections. Yes, and there's so many options like Cherish and Etsy and um, uh, I don't know. I, I haven't sold on first dibs, but there are several different um, online options for people to sell their artwork, submit their artwork. Um, and then we could have a whole completely different discussion on licensing. So maybe we'll come back and do that. Yeah, we'll do a part two on licensing. That's important. I think a lot of people always ask, you know, um, when do I do that? How do I do that? So and it's necessary licensing, not necessarily. I'll just answer that question. <laughs> I think um, in certain circumstances it can work, but you don't always need an agent. I, I would your art too. So sometimes you can make calls and reach out also. What did you say the last thing that you said? You cut off. Just make the call to the company. Um, I had a person who worked in a licensing business give me that advice years ago, and it was the best advice I, I was given. So otherwise you're just, I don't know. I don't, if I go into all of that, I'll just keep going on and on. But you want to make your art and not have uh, someone else making money off of your art that you've created and worked so hard for. Yes. Yes. So, um, and I guess that kind of takes us a little bit into galleries and what you think about um, going into galleries and then having them represent you and taking a big chunk of, of your money. I mean, do you, do you, I, I think there's a place, a definite that there's a value in galleries add a um, definitely value. 
Um, and I love galleries. I've been in galleries. I her if you here's the deal. Some people don't want to sell their own work, right? Galleries are perfect. If you have the ability to sell your own work, then maybe you don't need to be in a gallery. So it, it just depends. There's uh, that is another conversation too. I don't think it's a valuable one um, because it's not always the answer, and it doesn't necessarily always validate your artwork. Um, but I do think that there. I buy artwork from galleries. I love. Um, the gallery world, you have to be very picky about what type of galleries you're in and make sure that they are promoting you with social media. A lot of time you can times you can promote yourself. And personally, if I'm just being honest, I um, would really struggle ever signing a contract with a gallery asking me not to ever sell my artwork outside of my studio. Mm hmm that I had to be 100% sold through a gal that gallery. Yeah, because that constrains you. But tremendously, but I, th if you think about it, I am one person selling one person's art. A gallery is trying to sell 30, 40, 50, 70 people's art. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you have to look at all of the math when it, when you're deciding on whether or not that's going to be a fit. Right. And I think, I mean, listen, I think galleries are super important. I do too. For, I, I really believe in them. I think if you find the, the right connection, the right, the right representation, I think most of them are willing to work with you as an artist. If they really want you, they will work with you somehow. And I, have, um, I was going to say, I have a show coming up at Elder Gallery in Charlotte on in, in September. I think it's the 25th. Sorry if I don't have that date. Like, I, it's been a rough week, so I can, didn't pull that one out. But it is um, called, entitled Joy, and they are such an amazing gallery and are so supportive of artists. You want to find those galleries that... Like you said, they are truly valuable and important. Right, and they want to have that connection with you, with the artist. They want to represent you, and they want to, you know, they want to sell, yes. and they want to, they want to represent you the best that they can. And so, when you find that connection, I think it's just, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And nowadays, you know, people were saying um, all last year, you know, now with with being on social media you know, um, is it important to be in galleries? I say, yes, it's still very important. I think it's, you know, I think it's legit. I think if you can, um, I don't think someone just said collectors see galleries as legit as opposite to online. I don't really think so. I think that there's a, both sides of the coin there. I think that, you know, collectors buy from here, from there. If they love it, um, they're going to buy it. If mm -hmm. they have a connection, they're going to buy it. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, I think it's just a matter of, of your, your own personal preference. Like you said, if you're selling and you don't need representation, good for you. But some people are not ever going to be comfortable with that. And they don't want to hassle with that. They just want to paint. And I 100% get that. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's a perfect scenario. Yes. I agree. And the and there are ga and there are also artists that are you know at that museum level that are selling in galleries around the world that they would never be able to get their art out into at that level anyway. So right. yeah, it, you mean into the mainstream? Yeah, uh, or in um, other countries where. You're not flying to promote your artwork necessarily. No, I am not. <laughs> yeah. yeah very, there are some really um, very important galleries out there. So, Wendy, um, like now would be the time to show the incredible artwork that you are donating. 
Um, and we are so lucky because before we, we could even go live, we sold the pieces. Yes, they sold <laughs> morning. So here's one. So, um, so Wendy is, um, she made these and she finished them last night at 1130. So, um, kudos to you. <laughs> oh, there's that one, <laughs> which we'll talk about. And then that's the second one that we sold. Um, so we made $600 for Feeding America, you guys, $600. Yes dollars so i'm so excited because that means we gave six thousand meals for people in need and um we i could not do this without you guys without you wendy my army of artists um and um helping all these people that um we are still in, in so much need of food and um we cannot you know shut our eyes to the big problem that we have here, which is really um, food. And so um, we are providing um, so much help as a community of artists. And it's just, it gives me so much joy to know that we made all this money today for them. So thank you so much for our collectors and for you, Wendy, for, for doing this for me. Oh, for of us. Course. For doing that. No, you're amazing. And you've worked really hard this year. Yes. To raise lunch. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and on that note, um, yeah. Wendy is my last interview for the next month. I'm going to be out. I'm going to take my own time, um, which I'm so excited. I need to breathe a little. I haven't taken a break since April of um, 2020. Um, so I just need a little bit of time for myself and uh, time to paint and time to be in my studio. So I'm giving that um, incredible gift of time. Or it's the best, the best gift. Yes, exactly. It is the best. So I, I can't wait for that. And can you talk a little bit about the painting that you have behind you? Yes. Well, I am working on, um, let's see if you can see it. It's kind of, I don't know if it, it's kind of dark in here. Does it look dark on the? It's okay. We can see it. Let me see. I can get it I'm going to turn off the comments real quick so we can actually see the whole thing. Wow. Yes. This piece is for um, a client overseas and I'm working on a much larger piece, but also I have another, hold on one second as you're looking at that and I'll bring you. I, I can see I match. I'm all green. My background is green. My t-shirt is green. Your painting is green. <laughs> oh, wow. Ooh. That I is love that. This one is complete. I don't know if you can even see it because I'm so, I'm so short and petite. <laughs> oh my God, Wendy. How that, big is that? That one, um, is complete so i'm giving two options for this client um and then we have i have a huge piece that i'm doing for their four years so it's super exciting i love oh it oh my gosh so how big is the piece that you just showed us that is a 40 by 60. wow and then the okay other... and tell us tell us the materials that you like using what do you what do you use I love, um, if I'm just, if I have plenty of time, I love oil paint, but, um, I had taught myself over the years because I learned as an oil painter, I taught myself how to use acrylic and I love them. I have embraced all of the acrylics and what that sent me on a journey of really being obsessed with all of the mediums, materials. So I use paper, acrylic, gouache, um, wax when I'm doing some oil painting. Um, I what kind of paper do you use? What kind of paper do you like using? I use several different. I have watercolor paper that I use heavy watercolor for these 
pieces, and this is acrylic and gouache and some graphite. Okay. Those. And then I also I have one here that I'm just working on that's past it's pencil pastels. So I Ooh. love um I love the look and feel of the pastels. They're so fun. Yes. And I get bored easily. Um but I love the heavy paper. I buy them in rolls. I also use paper paper with some of my ink pieces. Um, I use those for collage as well. And then I use like just your medium gray mm. drawing. Okay. A lot for collage pieces. And um, do you use any like mark making stuff, like drawing uh, materials, like markers, that kind of thing? Oh my God, look. <laughs> Uh, pasta markers. Yes, I love them all. Thank you, Pasca. Um, yeah. I love these markers. They are amazing. Uh, almost every color, size. Seriously? Oh my God. Wait, what's that orange one that you have? That's not Pasca. That's a different one. That one. It's from Cheap Joe's. And hold on, I have to put my glasses on. Um, <laughs> I love it. That's our local store. This is, it looks like it's called Acrylic. I mean, is that the company? Oh, could be. Let me see. Yep. Yeah, that is the company. Yeah. And this, cool. um, sometimes I'll use these if I like the color a little bit better. And then they also have some empty ones so you can make your own and put your, create your own colors and put them in the markers. Love them. Also, I really, I know everybody, as an oil painter, I learned how to, you know, and the, I learned how to paint with oil paints. They're so delicious. And I learned, you know, about all the beautiful brushes, etc. But I have to say, <laughs> I had sponge brushes. I, I mean, really <laughs> you don't you don't have to spend a ton of money Practice, use a lot of materials and figure out what works for you sometimes yeah. these things sometimes homemade things like a broom amazing that your dustpan sweeper you can use the little pan and the broom exactly so, brilliant <laughs> So there's no excuse to making work art, right? <laughs> um, someone just said they have your Black Lives Matter peas. I know. Thank you so much. I love oh. that. Oh, Thanks. I'm so happy. So, um, guys, I'm opening the floor up to questions. This would be the perfect time for you to ask questions for Wendy um, because we're almost going to be out of time and we still have like five, five more minutes. So um, Wendy, we know that you're not in your studio. You're in your um, beach home and um, it's unfortunate because you just opened your new um, showroom and we will have a part two, guys, where we'll talk about licensing and she will be in her actual new store. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about that and where it's located and where can people find you? Yes, it's at Camp North End. You can also find us on Instagram at Shop Wendy O'Connor. And it's W I, like the wind, W I N D Y. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you. We are at Camp North End off of Graham Street in Charlotte. But we have a showroom to designers for um, our trade accounts. So we sell to the trade for fabrics, wallpapers, pillows. Our wallpaper, I love. You, people, Designers can come in or order samples online, or you can come in and pick them up, any kind of wallpaper memos. And then we have our pillows. Ottoman. So we have just a couple of furniture pieces we're branching into. I have a line of chairs and um, 
tabletop. So placemats, napkins, but then we also curated some items for Camp North End because it's a, you know, people come in there with their kids, dogs. So we have dog treats, dog bowls. I'm working on a line of leashes and then um, some things for the home. Like, or if you wanted to go, we have these beautiful cut glass plastic wear. So it's not yeah. great. You can go get a glass of wine across campus somewhere else with your beautiful um, glass. So Sharon asked if your designs will be laminated on surfboards. I am working um, and getting like a real shaper for a real surfboard. Yes. That would be so cool. Oh my gosh. So yeah, we cool. House and none of them have my artwork on them. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's actually, it's, it, it will be brilliant when you do, because um, if you browse through um, Wendy's artwork, you're going to see that she has made some artwork with surfboards and it's just the coolest thing. Like, Thank you. Like go like right now and look at that because it's just incredible and I'm super a huge fan and uh, um, surfers so yeah yeah I love the whole like everyone all my kids their friends we just sit and watch surfing and windsurfing and kiteboarding and all of that on the beach it's nice amazing um, so um, tell me what you want to say in the last two minutes that we have with our time together. Oh, I want to say way to go, Sandra, for doing all of your good deeds in the world. It's powerful and meaningful. And I want to say love to everyone. I just want to send my love and my, um, all the good vibes out there because Life is so fragile and short and so important to cherish one another. Whether you know someone or not, be kind to your to strangers, be kind to the people sitting next to you on an airplane, be kind to people in traffic <laughs> who cut you off at the grocery store. You never know what someone's going through and sometimes someone's bad behavior, not always, some people just have bad behavior, but could be some of their pain. So I just say, um, do your best to connect with more human beings out there. That's what we're meant to do and love one yes. another. I agree. And I couldn't have said it better than you, my friend. I am so blessed um, to have all of you guys to be part of this tap into your creativity that just it's all been kind of like a whirlwind. I have to take it all in. Now I have time to do that and kind of just connect with myself. And every one of us has the capability of doing something good out there. And, um, you know, if we all did a little bit of good, we would be in a great place. And so um, just keep that in mind, you know, just put things um, out there that, um, have your best foot forward and um, just your love, like you said, um, out there. And it will come right back to you. I'm telling you. Tenfold. No doubt. Yes. Yes. It's yes. So, um, Wendy, thank you so much, my friend. You and I will plan on our part two. And uh, thank you, everyone, for your support, for um, watching these interviews, for buying artwork um, for Feeding America. I couldn't do it without my army of artists or without you, our collectors. I, I just couldn't be where I am today. So um, thank you. I will see you all next month. I'm not sure when I'm coming back, but I will let you know. And um, thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, everyone, for joining. So kind of you. Take care, my friend. Love you. Bye. Bye.